Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Laura Canfield Show. Thank you so much for being here. And today I'm so excited that my good friend Angela Strank is back with us. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been, been way too long. I don't know how that happened, but it's been way too long. And so um, Angela is here today to talk to us about, do you know what it means to thrive? Right? Do you know what it means to thrive? And a lot of times, People talk about thriving all the time, right? But are you thriving or are you just surviving? You know, we'll talk about that in a lot more. So if you don't know Angela, I'll tell you a little bit about her. Angela is much more than a life coach, an intuitive healer, and a teacher. She's often referred to as the life changer. Using her gifts and talents, she helps clients move through major life challenges into successful outcomes. Her gentle, trusting nature, deep compassion, and intuitive gifts have touched the lives of many. She's passionate about using her profound gifts to assist others in transforming and living their best lives. So I'm excited because, you know, it, I didn't realize it had been so long since we have um, done a show together. But um, last time it was before I moved to Austria, you know, and it was like, really? I mean, I'm sure we must have had another show since then, but maybe not. And at that time, you know, if some of you I'm sure will remember my poor daughter was going through a difficult time because she was just graduating high school and you know it was she was going through a lot of stress you know with uh moving and uh packing and you know i was moving just everything and um so angela worked with her um a little bit and explained what was going on and worked with her energetically and so you know right after that she got she got better like really quick you know and i think it and it stuck with my daughter, Amanda, what happened and um, what Angela had said to her about what she was going through at the time. And it stuck with her. And since then, you know, she doesn't get that stressed out anymore. <laughs> you know, she's understood now that when, um, it's, when it's emotions, you know, and how it's affecting her and it sometimes shows up in her physical reality, you know, sometimes in her body. And she realizes that, oh, it might, it might just be me holding on to these emotions. It might just be me releasing these emotions. It might just be blah, blah, blah. But before that, you know, because it doesn't matter what mom says. <laughs> Sometimes kids have to hear it from somebody else. So again, you know, um, I still remember that, you know, so clearly because it was like unbelievable how in bad shape she was and how you helped her move through it so quickly. So thank you again, Angela. Oh, my pleasure. And you know what? She was uh, very courageous in the sense that she was really honest with me with what was going on and really open to sharing kind of where her vulnerability was. And those transformation changes wouldn't have happened unless she was in that place. And she was. And so mm -hmm. it was fantastic. But that's why I remember when we last did a radio show, because it was right after the last radio show we were talking, you're telling me your concerns. You were very worried at the time. Oh, yes. <laughs> and uh, we hung up the phone and I got on the phone with her and, and that was the last time that I was on the show. And you know, the only reason why it's the last show is because I have been busy building online health programs ever since. And so I actually haven't done any interviews with anybody. So mm -hmm. you're my first one back now that I'm ready to start um, getting back into you know this kind of world for myself. So yeah, but that was, what, three years ago? I know, right? And it's like, where does the time go, right? And, and you know, like, if you, you know, would have seen, oh, I don't know, I, I don't want to talk about it anymore, but if you would have seen Amanda, she had hives all over her body, every single inch of her body, and she was itching like crazy. And after she, you know, she, you, you worked with her, then I, I, within two days, I think, you know, they were all gone. She was able to attend her, not the graduation ceremony, but the prom, which was the day after. You know, and I was like, you know, it was, it was like, that was the big thing, right? Going to the, the prom. And she was, oh my gosh, she, she did so beautiful and amazing. And it's like, oh my God, thank God. And everybody just like was so excited to see her and so happy to see her because they missed her, you know, for the graduation, right? And so they were so happy to see her. And it was just like, it just turned out to be such a wonderful outcome, you know, in the end, you know? And, yeah, it was just, wow. And, you know, and that's the thing is sometimes we don't realize even when we're going through a difficult situation, um, what a blessing it can be, you know, because so for her, yeah, she was in, in a lot of discomfort. She was going, releasing a lot, having a lot of emotional stuff. She couldn't go to her graduation, right? But when she went to her, 
from, um, the love and adoration and um, this, you know, er everyone's attention on her and made, made her feel so good, you know, and so loved and so acknowledged that it's like, I don't think she, she had ever had that, you know, in, to such a degree. So that was uplifting for her too, you know? What a nice blessing, hey? Right. Yeah. So there's sometimes there's others blessed. There's well, there's always blessings in everything. Right. So sometimes if we, even difficult situations, there can be blessings in it. And are we looking for those? Right. And right. so um, and part of, you know, for me, thriving is looking at the blessings, being grateful for what you have and striving for more. Striving may not be the right word, but reaching for more, asking for more, continuing to, you know, look for more. But looking at what you have currently and being grateful for that, acknowledging that. That's the foundation, starting with where we're at and being grateful for it. But then there's an, another level that comes in after we've kind of achieved that area where we're grateful for where we're at. And the next level is being okay with not surviving anymore and it not being made wrong. Because in our society, is, it is made wrong. We this is what I wanted to work with you guys today about because it came through strongly with guidance that whoever's on this um, event with us um, might be aligned or may benefit from where guidance wants to go. And it's interesting because if we go back to elementary school and we go back even farther, so the first two, three, four years of our life, the most thing, the most we heard in most households is the word no. Mm -hmm. No, don't touch that. No, don't explore that. No, don't go into this. Even with my kitten, you know, we're constantly worried if they're going to get up, you know, into something and hurt themselves. And so we're holding them back. We're, we're, we're you know, binding their energy, basically, instead of allowing it to just really expand and, and get big. And when we get that early on conditioning, no, meaning when we want something, we want to explore something, no first, because you're going to be unsafe and then tread the waters and then see if you can go and explore it. it. It does something to us in our ability to actually burst past um, surviving and really anchoring in and going into what we call thriving. And we need to have that yes mentality. But I'm not talking from a conscious level to, to understand this. I'm talking from the unconscious mind that the unconscious mind knows, understands, feels, experiences that no matter what, life has our back. No matter what, everything works out for the best. No matter what, all our needs are going to be met, even if it doesn't come in the, in the way that we want it. And when we can get to that place on an unconscious level, meaning we don't even have to convince ourselves, we don't even have to tell ourselves, it's just automatic. Then we can start shifting the, the messages that we're telling ourselves to, yes, yes, I can have this. Yes, I can be absolutely thriving, having more than I can ever imagine, and I'm not going to be made wrong for it. I'm not going to be told be careful, you might cause harm, or be careful, you might get into something that you can't handle. And so today, guidance came through really strongly, about half an hour ago, that um, it would be a great benefit um, for us to really look at that early conditioning of the no. And although it was intended absolutely to keep us safe, it was intended for our best well-being, it also imprinted us of that no mentality in the sense of we can't have it all. We can't get bigger than life. We can't go out there and be an example for others because we all have some of this conditioning. And you can see that when people start to really start to thrive and they really start to either grow their business or they start to you know, become really fit or they start to attract lots of abundance, then all of a sudden there's, a, there's some part of different people in our in our world that might start saying oh can you have that you know start questioning and, and it's such a mentality in our society to try and keep each other small um, and I don't I don't think we have to be that way I think we can actually celebrate each other's wins we can celebrate our our magnificence that kind of thing you know I, I met somebody recently who was telling me how she went from a really difficult place really really challenging I don't want to get into details but she went through kind of a dark space. She ended up coming out the other side where she lives half the year in Mexico, half the year here in Canada. She's got more financial abundance than she can ever imagine. She's got her dream partner, she dream life. Mm -hmm. um, and she wakes up every day saying, oh my God, I love this life. 
in that journey, she said to me, we were, she was talking very candidly with me about how, how many friends she lost in that journey because there was a lot of friends that were so uncomfortable with her having what they wanted and that mirror of the lack <laughs> made them feel um, less than. And so they, they couldn't handle it and they dropped out of her life instead of celebrating for her. And I believe when we celebrate for others, more energy comes towards us, more abundance comes towards us. And when I talk abundance, it's way more for me than anything financial. I'm talking mm -hmm. abundance, joy, happiness, health, laughter, light, all that stuff. And so we want to start to get into a place and supporting each other, not even as women, but as a society of celebrating everybody's wins um, because we all go through our stuff to get to those places. And sometimes we only see the outcome versus the challenge, the struggle, the, the exhaustion, the, the barriers that have to be broken down, the beliefs that have to be shattered to get to that place of thriving. And so that's what I want for us is to connect into this energy that wants to support us in actually having that thriving for ourselves so we can be an example and not feel bad about it, not feel guilty about it, not feel like we have to keep ourselves small so that other people feel comfortable. Because I think we're at a point in humanity where we need to break free of some of these limitations that have kept a lot of us confined and small at a very, you know, societal level, but also individual. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And can we do some work around some of the beliefs that may be holding us back still, you know, like, um, not necessarily about keeping us small, but just limiting us in ways that we don't even know some of those unconscious beliefs that we don't even know we have but they're constantly sabotaging our efforts. That's right, that's right. So the work that I do, anytime you work with me on any level, whether it's through a webinar, private sessions, things like this, I work with high vibrational energy. Mm -hmm. And the energy that I work with is specifically attuned to work with the subconscious mind, which is my biggest passion. I believe that um, our subconscious mind is the key to our success, it holds our beliefs, it's what drives our system, it is what's actually having reactions before we can even consciously think about what we are reacting to, um, and it can be reactions in the good, and it can be also reactions in the very uncomfortable, but it is very, very powerful, it's like the hard drive of our system, and I have developed and worked with a certain vibration that speaks directly to that subconscious mind. So everything that we're talking about, the energy is already running, it's already starting to bring into your unconscious mind whatever your stuff is around thriving, your beliefs, maybe you can hear, maybe even the conscious thoughts saying, oh, well, that can't happen for me, or, you know, I know somebody had that for them, and, you know, why did it happen to them and not me? Whatever that might be, or it might be completely unconscious, you're not even aware of what might be blocking you from thriving. But the energy that I work with will speak to the subconscious mind. And what it does is, first off, it does is it mirrors to the subconscious mind what the block is. So say it's a belief, uh, it could be a belief, it could be uh, an event that happened in childhood up to the present moment um, that is keeping you locked in that limita limiting belief. It could be um, an energy block, it could be multiple different things that are holding the subconscious mind in that place of where you're at versus where you want to go. And once it mirrors to the subconscious mind, the energy mirrors to the subconscious mind, what is the block? Then the energy starts to show it a new uh, flip side of that coin. So for example, with every failure on the flip side of that is success. And so if you're struggling with failure, the energy will show the, the subconscious mind the failure block and then it will switch it to the opposite experience and bring in the energy of success. How we do this is through my meditative healings is something I've developed um, specifically around the subconscious mind. So I give your conscious mind a job in the sense that I will walk you through a visualization. The energy is working regardless of your paying attention, regardless if you fall asleep. Um, but the conscious mind likes to be participating otherwise it starts to sabotage or it starts to get tired or it, it checks out or whatever it does that's just the conscious mind so i give it a job by speaking to you and sharing with you visualizations i'm seeing and that's all just intended to show your conscious mind what we're working with and then that imagery which is this powerful communication tool to the subconscious mind can then start speaking to the subconscious of what we want to work with 
Now, this is all very generic and it's all very um, general because we're working in a group consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. But we are all very connected. And so for whatever, say I'm working with the energy and I'm specifically working with you, Alara, anybody who's paying attention and who's dialed into the energy, anything that's similar in vibration that might be blocking them as well would also receive that shift, if you will. And so, you know, it's very different when you work with someone one-on-one -on -one, because then you can really dial into what that block is. But in this kind of situation, I mean, you keep it very general and bring in a lot of general inner areas around blocks around thriving so that um, everybody gets a little bit of something. And some people might get a lot, depending on how much they resonate with whatever blocks coming, coming through. Mm -hmm. in my experience, I've been doing this work for over 20 years, they're more alike than different. And because of that, it makes group consciousness work so effective. And as you know, when you bring energy and groups together, it magnifies, and that magnification is what's really powerful, right? Right, so, absolutely. Absolutely, we can do some work on that. Um, it, before we do, because I'm gonna go into kind of a meditative state myself, um, is there any questions that anybody has before I go into that? And if not, we'll go right into the processes and then we can talk later. Yeah, yeah and, that, and that's a, that's a um, I wanted to ask, you know, if anybody has a question that you'd like to ask, a general one at this point, you know, not general one or even maybe something specific because maybe that's what we will cover during the process. Maybe, you know, what, what somebody brings up, maybe what's covered in the process, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you would like to ask a question, you can raise your hand or you can just write um, your question in the chat. Right, so whichever one works for you. And if you can't raise your hand, just unmute yourself. Cause I know, you know, people who are on, I don't know how you do it on the phone. So if you just want to unmute yourself, you can and go ahead and ask your question. <laughs> Cause I don't know how people do it on the phone, you know. Um, so, it, but before we started, you know, I, I wanted to ask about, you know, um, Certain things such as, for example, you know, let's say you have a, a plan, you have some sort of desire, you have some sort of goal, you know, and, you know, you start out great, but then you stop. Something happens and you can't follow through or something happens and, you know, it's like you have to stop and start, start again from the beginning. Stop and start again. Stop and start again. What is that energy? That's the subconscious mind keeping us small and held down. It's... Sometimes the subconscious mind gets a bad rap. So it's shutting us down, but it's doing so for a reason. So it might perceive that, you know what, the time is not right. Or it might perceive that, you know what, you've done this before. It didn't work out so well for me. Why don't we just kind of shut this down so we don't waste energy? It, it's trying to do its best for us, but it's also conditioned from our childhood, right? And so we want to update some of those conditionings, update those beliefs so that they really match and are in alignment who we've evolved to at this point in time, right? And so, but that resistance, that blockage when you're ready to do something and you can feel things shutting down, that's what I want to work with is that piece. Mm -hmm. And so instead of taking questions at this point, why don't we just get ourselves nice and quiet and close our eyes? I really invite you to close your eyes because this is really powerful. And I want you to think of a time where you have had an intention, either you want to build something successful in your business, whether it's you want to create something, maybe it's a relationship you've had. And I want you to bring to a time where you are aware of that desire and it's that real want that you, that you have in yourself. And yet there feels like something's stopping you, blocking you. I want you to tune into that blockage, that, that, that feeling. For me, it feels like, something's actually physically holding me back if I if I dial into past situations where I felt where I was being held back and so it almost felt like a chain experience so that's what I want you just to focus on and then with your eyes closed I want you to imagine we're going to take the mind on a little journey so that it understands that it can relax and have fun in this journey it doesn't have to be a difficult process of change so imagine that you travel to some beautiful beach and it's a warm sunny day and I want you just to imagine taking off any restrictive clothing, like tight belts, you know, shoes, socks, feel the uh, meadow underneath your feet. And I just want you to take a deep breath. 
I'm just going to invite the energy that I work with to come forward. We ask and intend to create a sacred space in this time, space, to really anchor and bring in source energy that will support us in really connecting into transformation and change on the deepest levels, consciously and unconsciously, around any known or unknown blocks that we have about moving forward and stepping into our successes. About really, really letting go of what might limit us, hold us back. And we invite this energy that I'm bringing in now to touch into, connect into those blockages for yourself individually. And at this time, just bring to mind that feeling, that sensation you get when you feel like you're being held back. So for some people, it might show up as procrastination. For some people, it might show up as doors closing. Some people might feel, show up as, and you're doing all this energy, all this work, and it's like trickling, just trickling. The changes are what you're trying to achieve. And as you hold your awareness on that block, that sensation, that feeling, try to make it physical for yourself. Like, what do you feel like in your physical body? Where are you holding on to that energy? And imagine, I'm just going to allow the mind to be part of this process. So imagine this beautiful, it's like a golden white light energy is coming in through the crown chakra. And first thing it's doing is opening and expanding that crown chakra so that we can have a stronger connection to our source, to grace, to support. We ask to clear and release any blockages to really strongly connecting to source, to grace, to wisdom. Anywhere we might have unplugged, shut down, blocked that flow of energy. Take a nice deep cleansing breath. There's a little almost like a wanting to stop breathing here as this energy comes in. And it's just that sensation of a shift about to happen. And then exhale. There, now the energy is coming into the third eye, it's just working with the perceptions that we have about our experiences. And again, breathe. And the energy is coming down into the throat chakra. Opening, expanding. Energy is coming down into the heart chakra now. Anywhere we are closed off, blocked from having an open heart center to align with our truest dreams, desires, and that real core desire to thrive in this lifetime. It has to open up reconnect to those desires, those dreams. Now the energy is coming down into the solar plexus. And this is where we often get held back. This is our power center. This is where we kind of move forward from our earthly, physical manifestations. And then that energy of our dreams, our desires, the higher energies of consciousness. And we kind of get blocked here where they should be merging in the heart center. So we're just going to clear, release, heal, forgive, let go of whatever might be blocking individually that deepest desire to really truly break free of these limitations, these chains. There we go. So I'm just feeling like the energy is kind of busting through here, breaking through some of these limiting beliefs, no matter where they come from, maybe any memory events or challenge earlier on. You already lived it. We don't need to relive it by going through it and analyzing it and figuring it out. You've already done that. But the block or the energetic imprint of that experience, we're just inviting it to just heal and release here. So you can be more free, more curious, more playful in this manifestation process of life. There we go. I'm feeling lots going on in the solar plexus, which is fantastic news. You might feel a little bit of vibrations happening. You might feel a little bit like you want to sway. You might actually have some tightness or heaviness in the solar plexus. It's all just energy expanding, swirling, shifting. Take a nice deep cleansing breath here for me, please. Energy is coming down into that sacral chakra now. This is at the navel level. 
Opening, expanding here. Doing some work with procreation here and, and not in the sense of human to human, more like creating. So they're showing me like the energy of creating, moving forward, pro-life, um, life affirming energy here. Anywhere we might be shut off, blocked, limited in our ability to create, create the lives that we truly wish to achieve and experience. Again, I'll just get you to breathe for me. There's a little tightness, restriction here. Relax your hands, just really come into the energy, just deeply opening and receiving here. Now the energy is coming down into the sacral, I mean, into the root chakra, base of the pelvis and hips level. Anywhere in all time and space where we may be feeling, experiencing, at victim of any memory, event, or challenge where we may have been held back, limited, made to feel small, where our dreams may not have mattered, may not have been important, may not have been valued. We ask and intend to clear, release, heal, forgive, let go of anything that is no longer serving. With ease, with grace. We ask for this transformation, this change, this shift to be just beautiful, light, joy-filled, uplifting. Fantastic. Excellent. So the energy is really opening and expanding. So you're going to see some of the energy going down the legs and into the feet. So we really anchor this down into the physical. So this is not just a thought idea. This is not just an emotional or energy experience. We actually want this physically manifesting in your life. Or when you start to move forward with your dreams, that doors open for you. That synchronicities happen and lining up with energy possibilities become more and more abundant for you. More and more grace, more and more abundance of whatever you may need, whether that's the support, whether that's the finances, whether that's the ideas, the creativity, whatever it is, whatever the ingredients are that you need for your dreams to manifest for your own success, that you will start to line up more gracefully, easily with those energies of supports take a nice deep cleansing breath here all right so grace just wants to tap this out throughout all the chakra system our chakra system is very very powerful it it kind of runs all our systems and so we want all systems on board with these shifts these changes so that your transformations and changes are so effortless that you almost aren't even aware that it's happening but all of a sudden you just become more aware of more miracles blessings opportunities that's what i want for you from this energy so we're going to tap this out so we're going to just very feather like gently tap on the crown of your head and i'm going to get you to cycle nice deep cleansing breaths here for me again feather like we're tapping energy here not necessarily the physical body our intention often is to really you know, tap quite hard i want feather like so that chakra can really balance this shot. This tapping helps the chakra come into complete balance with what we have just aligned with versus having a contraction to it, which is where often we have that experience of a negative event as we're going through a change or feels like we're going through a healing crisis. We don't want any of that stuff. We want just a nice graceful shift and transformation. Great. We're going to now go to the third eye. Nice deep cleansing breaths for me. We're going to tap this out. We want to be in full harmony and alignment with these intentions, with these shifts, with these transformations. Fantastic. We're going to go over the throat now. Again, feather like please. Really support that chakra and opening, balancing, harmonizing with this new alignment, new intention. Really owning it. Really honoring it. Fantastic. Deep breath coming into the heart space. Fantastic. Great work. Lots of expansion happening here. The energy is coming down now into that solar plexus. We're going to do a little extra work here just because this is where the biggest constriction was. 
also uh, the crown chakra, but we're going to really just really tap out this solar plexus so that it's on board with this idea of really stepping into your thriving experience, really stepping into your power, success, abundance, and feeling comfortable with it. Here we go. Just keep tapping for me. There's a big release happening here. It's okay to own this experience of really stepping into this new path of learning how to thrive. Fantastic. There we go. I felt a nice big shift there. We're going to go down to this uh, navel level for me, please. Breathing into that. Feather like tapping. And we're now we're going to come down to the base of the spine. So you can tap either at the very front at the hips there, or you can tap at the base of the spine in the back, whatever is most comfortable for you. I like to tap on both for myself. Take a nice deep cleansing breath, really just allowing the expansion to happen. And then just relax your arms. And I just want you to sense and feel into this energy. You might feel a little bit more supercharged. Might notice that your body's more upright, more aligned, you're not slouching as much. You might have some body temperature changes. And you might actually experience absolutely nothing. And that's okay too. It's more, I'm more interested in what you'd notice in the coming days and weeks in your life versus what you're experiencing now. Now is just an added bonus. Take a deep cleansing breath. And I always like to give thanks whenever I work with this energy. So I just invite you while I close off this energy process to just give thanks in your own special way, whatever that may look like. And uh, uh, we give thanks so much for this beautiful source grace energy that has blessed us with its healing, with its transformation and with its grace. We give thanks for the opportunity to come together as a group and really put forward this new intention to really step into what it means to thrive in life and to celebrate not only our own successes and our own wins, but celebrate the successes and wins for others so that we can uplift and inspire others. We give thanks for all of our physical body, emotional, spiritual, mental, and energetic levels being open to really stepping into this place. And we give thanks for Alara for really in opening her beautiful practice to invite people into her space and to share with her guests um, our, our gifts and uh, being open to really sharing her own gifts by bringing people together. As we close off this session, I am in great, great gratitude. Namaste. <sighs> nice. When you're ready, you can open your eyes. Come back to where you're at. <laughs> you're yawning. That's a good sign. Oh, yes. I was yawning through the whole thing, and I am also freezing now. Temperature changes. <laughs> Fantastic. That's good. That's good. And at the same time, like you had said, um, also energetically, like more uh, sitting up straight. <laughs> We're just like, oh, yeah, that's me. I was, I was slouching before, and I, I felt myself being more aligned, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So that was great, thank you. You're welcome. You're so welcome. How's, how's everyone doing? Anybody have a comment, question, feedback? What did you experience? Go ahead and either raise your hand or submit a question or comment in the chat, or you can unmute yourself if that's easier. So whatever, whatever works for you. Um, one of the things that I got during that, Angela, was about uh, being wrong, you know? So um, the wrongness of me was one of the things that came up. The wrongness of your magnificence. Yeah. <laughs> your brilliance, right? Yeah. And I think a lot of that goes back to childhood. Of, mm -hmm. We aren't encouraged and not, especially in our educational system, to really, really uplift each other and to celebrate each other and our uniqueness. You see this a lot in, in school, especially in high school, when people start to really tap into that creativity and they become, you know, start bringing forward their uniqueness. They're often ostracized for that. And so we're really conditioned to be as normal, normal, normal as possible. And there's no such thing as normal. 
So we're all trying to fit into a box that none of us actually <laughs> fit into. Uh, just some of us are better at getting into that box and staying in that box so that we don't get bugged, we don't get uh, harassed, we don't get bullied, those kinds of things, right? Yeah. But that creativity is what makes our uniqueness, our brilliance, our magnificence. And we all, I truly, truly believe we all have a unique gift, a unique, unique energetic vibration that we've brought to this planet that is significant, which is needed for our consciousness to, sh to elevate and change as humanity a group humanity and um it's important for us to find what that gift is and then to let go of these beliefs like what you just said being wrong for who mm -hmm. you are mm -hmm. so that you can really bring forward your gift your energy um and help others which is fantastic and what's you know what's interesting is that the even the idea of being wrong the person that was wrong the the younger version of me um is no longer here anyways like cause, you know i this version of me is a walk-in so but it's those memories are still there of the older version of me mm -hmm. does that make sense but it's all imprinted in the subconscious absolutely yeah yeah absolutely. <laughs> so but the subconscious can be changed meaning the story that it has can be rewritten and that's one one step we've done today is showing the subconscious mind that we don't have to stay in that survival we can you know Basically, the energy is to show this, the subconscious mind, okay, let's expand into, into thriving. And then you might have felt some resistance in your body, so a contraction, a tightness, a heaviness, whatever that might have been. And the energy says, oh, there's that block, and it went to it for each person. It went where it needed to go. It's very, very wise. And then it started to work with it. And then through the tapping process, we were just then taking the entire system and resetting it, if you will, to this new um, expansion. Mm -hmm. you've achieved today and achieved today yeah 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 it was interesting because you know it's like it's an old pattern so why is it you know still coming up when i'm not even that person anymore that's right well um so let it go so we're sorry because the subconscious was ready to let it go right yeah. cool thank you mm -hmm. so i have a message from sue so sue is it okay if i share it with angela in the group because you sent it to me privately and I just want to make sure it's okay for me to share. So, um, cause yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, there's a message from Sue and she said this was a very difficult process for her and she's been doing a lot of deep work. Um, and she focused on a need to ask for help, actually asking for money to stay alive. And the feeling was I would rather die than ask for help. And so I'm not sure if this was in the process or not, but she was, you know, she said, I screamed, I cried, and the fear was overwhelming. And she's at the end of the process, I, she said, I feel calmer. Nice, nice. Yeah, so, so the energy just brought to the surface some of the blocks, and they're non-truths, they're just the stories, right? And so the energy just brought it to the surface, and sometimes that can be intense because it's coming to the surface, and then if you're calmer after that's showing me that the energy has starting to what it does is it's like it puts this massive flashlight on whatever is that dark space whatever it may be uh and it can be intense at first that that all of a sudden a massive flashlight on it but then eventually we attune to it meaning we become okay with that light being on it that energy being on it and so the calmness comes through because the energy is now starting to wash it away if you will and mm -hmm. uh to work with it so it's fantastic so short, short process, yes, very powerful as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, and thank you, Sue, for um, sharing, because I know how difficult that can be. Um, and she's asking, is it unworthiness or is it not important to know? It's not important to know. It's not important to know because this is the thing. Whatever that conditioning is, you've already lived it. And that's what I love about this energy. It doesn't ask for us to relive analyze, evaluate, figure it out. It doesn't, it, it honors that we've already gone through whatever brought us to that place to believe what we believe. And all it wants to do is say, hey, this is it. Now we can start to just let it go and resolve it. And because we don't need to have to recycle everything. There, mm -hmm. That need doesn't have to be there. And so 
you can try and analyze it if you want to, but I invite you just to say, hey, you know what? I just let go of something, and how great is that? And uh, it can be that simple. Absolutely. Awesome. Beautiful. Thank you. And, you know, yeah, you know, sometimes we can analyze things over and over again, but, you know, it doesn't help because we've been doing that forever and we're sometimes still in the same position, right? So this, in this instance, let the energy do its thing, right? And, uh, and just let it release and clear. Fantastic. She said, I've, I've just, just, I, she's just, uh, she said, I've spent so much time searching and analyzing. So thank you. How beautiful. <laughs> It's a woman thing. All good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've all analyzed and searched and looked at and, you know, but when we're ready to let it go, we, you know, uh, that's, when, that's when the actual healing and transformation t that takes place when we're actually willing to let it go. But like, you know, and that's the thing. It's like, I've been willing, but how much of it was I really willing? Because part of it was still serving me, right? Yeah, Absolutely. Um, and there's layers, right? You got to remember there's our conscious mind, there's our subconscious mind, there's our super conscious mind. And so sometimes we let go in layers of our conscious mind or we let go of certain layers in our subconscious mind, but there's still, you know, like think of a, a, a blanket that's weaved together, right? Maybe we let go of some of those um, strips within the weave, but the blanket's still there. It may not be fully intact anymore. And so there's layers. And then as long as we're continuing just to, you know, I use our breath, right? inhale you're bringing in new life force energy you're exhaling you're letting go and so it's the same analogy like whatever's coming up is like pop bubbles coming to the surface and then it goes and that's you know it, it, life shows us that it can be that easy because of our breath we inhale new life we exhale old life mm -hmm. so it's just allowing that to happen mm -hmm. and you know and that's the thing it can be so uh easy like even in the work that i do we do a lot of breathing and you know <laughs> Before, I, and I don't know when that started, but um, before that, I always used to say, which, which is really funny, it's like, I can't, I can't breathe. You know, I can't breathe deeply. It's like, I, I can't, like, what's this breathing thing? And now with all the, all the work that I do, there's so much breathing. <laughs> That's part of it. <laughs> you know, the, it's about moving the energy and shifting the energy and letting go. And, um, and also at the same time being present, you know, the breathing is also about keeping you present instead of getting into your head. That's right. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, she said, yes, I felt that resistance and knew there was a story I was trying to hold on to. Fantastic. Yay, yes. let's celebrate her. <laughs> yay, yay, Sue. Let's let go of that story, right? Just don't hold on to it anymore because it hasn't ser it's not serving you anymore. So you mentioned something. Um, <laughs> yeah. Don't even go there. She said, so grateful for this easy awareness, although it was painful even releasing. Yeah, let go of that thought about even it was painful even releasing. It's, it's gone now. It's released, right? <laughs> um, so I was going to, uh, and so, you know, Sue mentioned a little, uh, a little bit in her question too um, around money. She said, asking for money to stay alive. So how come it, like, why is that that sometimes people don't, are not able to receive money for their services or their work? They're not able to do the work that they'd like to do, you know, and so the money's not coming in, even though they're probably, you know, probably really good, fantastic healers or teachers or whatever it is, that, or graphic designers or architects or whatever it is that they do, you know, uh, why is it not, I know why it's not the question, but you know what I mean? Like, what is it about that that does not allow them to receive clients, money, abundance, and so on? Well, that's a real broad question for a very individual experience, right? But yeah. I believe that we have a, thir a certain threshold for how much we can receive. And that threshold is often um, dictated from our childhood. So for example, you will see often that in generation to generation that, you know, the dad made this amount of money and the son, you know, the next generation makes a little bit more because of inflation, but doesn't really go outside of that, whatever that struggle might have been. Mm -hmm. uh, that's conditioning. And so it can come from so many places. And the thing that I love about this work and this energy, it, it constantly breaks down that conditioning so that we can raise our threshold, expand our ability to receive, to give, to have more life, all that stuff. Um, 
but the sources of where those limitations come are endless mm -hmm. and is very individual to the person. Mm -hmm. But again, it's not so important where it came from. It's important on how is it impacting us and what are we going to do to really try to break free from that. And so um, hopefully this process will help in, in that situation because we're, we were talking about Sue here. Um, uh, so her question, you know, you ask the universe a question, it will always answer. It doesn't always answer in the way that we think it's going to or in the timing, but you ask the question to receive more money. And so the universe heard that, the energy is aware of that. And so be mindful and be aware of just even the little gems that start coming after this process, because the more you become aware that there's something bigger than you that's wanting to support you, you're going to see more and more and more of it. What most people do, this is what's interesting, is receiving starts coming, but often we're so shut off to it, we don't see it. And so that flow starts to shut down again because it's a, it's a two way street of energy. So when we start to see where the energy is showing up and, and bringing us what we, what we need, what we desire, what we've asked for, it's a form of celebration for the energy or for life. And in doing so, it's a form of gratitude and that brings more and more and more. So I invite you to, after this process, is just notice the little gifts, the little blessings, the little bit of things that are coming in that is a form of receiving. And it, by noticing it and being grateful for it, you're going to get, it's like you're going to get that creek that's trickling to start being into a little creek. And then the more you do that, it's going to turn into a river and then it's going to turn into an ocean. And so the receiving, it doesn't matter what the source is for that block. What it matters is what we're doing when the energy starts coming towards us. Are we noticing? Are we awake? Are we open to it? And are we giving back to that energy by being grateful, by celebrating it and witnessing it? Mm -hmm. So that's how I approach life anyways. Awesome. Thank you. And so, you know, for those of you who may not already be part of my gratitude challenge, <laughs> join. Nice. I have a free gratitude challenge, you know, so um, it's at the bottom of every email. So you can just look it up. But yeah, you know, uh, I also find, you know, being grateful, acknowledging, appreciating, noticing, being aware um, are some of the easiest ways to start to receive more. And, also, and then it also comes down to, you know, you are worthy of receiving. You are deserving of receiving, right? There's no separation between you and the divine and you and abundance. And the source of abundance is source, right? <laughs> so if you're source... You have everything, but, and that's where the separation comes in. We separate ourselves from source, from the divine, from creator. Am I right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you're right. You are deserving. Every one of you. Every one of us. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so she says, you know, Acknowledge the flow. Yeah, so acknowledge the flow. Absolutely acknowledge the flow and be grateful for the flow. She said, I feel so grateful and even crying in gratitude at the smallest gift. So I'm truly grateful um, to even, smi to even to smile from someone, you know, even a pretty flower. I, I agree. Sometimes, you know, the gratitude can be so immense. You know, when I, I just, you know, got my puppy the other day and the first night he woke up in the middle of the night and it's like, he was so happy that he was not alone and that I was there. And he was like, I had tears of gratitude for that joy that he was bringing me in. And I was so grateful for him. Oh my goodness. I was like, oh. <laughs> it's like, wow. Yeah. You know, and you know, and it's not just, you know, uh, but that, it's a small thing. Right. But it's like when, when you, when you see that, and even, you know, when we first saw the puppy the first day, my husband was crying, you know, because, he just fell in love with him so quickly. And even for me, that is like so beautiful. I'm so grateful for, to have somebody like that who's so sensitive and can appreciate the gift of, of you know, this be beautiful puppy that we have, you know, or just, you know, and there's little things in there, but they all add up. And every little thing is not really little. It, it's big. It makes a difference, you know, and it opens up your heart even more to receive even more. Absolutely. Right. And so, yeah, <laughs> I just want to share that really quickly. Um, all right. Anybody else have anything coming up around uh, the process, around thriving, around making your dreams come true? 
there's, you know, there's, there's so much around that because I know some of you are, um, some of you are part of my <laughs> 21 day group. So I know some of you are working on um, creating your life in a different way and, you know, doing so much more. So if you have a question, this is a great time to ask. So Nikki has a question. She says, I have this strong feeling of being on a farm, living there in a community and the villagers sowing, reaping and caring for their medical needs. I also feel like it will be out of the country. Any feedback? I'm a huge advocate for farms. <laughs> I live on one, so I say, yes, go for it. That's amazing. You know, we're all getting called more to come back to the land and come back to nature and the simplicity. And so I'm not surprised that, you know, more and more people are being called to that. Um, I can say that it's a beautiful way to live. Absolutely. And if that will bring you joy, then absolutely go for it. Absolutely go for it. So just a, a general question, Angela, and this is um, like, like let, let, let's say you've had a dream forever, like 20 years, right? You have this dream, you feel it, it feels really good, it feels strong, you know, when you think about it, it lights you up, you're excited, everything, but you, you just can't get it started, you just can't get it going. Well, first thing I say is, wow, what a loyal dream. Our dreams come to us, we don't go see them, they come to us. And the ones that stay with us lifelong, A, are loyal, B, will never leave us, and C, are absolutely on your path, destined to come into, into fruition. You know, we all have these fleeting ideas and, and feelings and, oh, I should do this and this. And then a week or two or something like that, it kind of just leaves. Well, it left because it was never yours to begin with. Mm -hmm. But the ones that stay with you and you have not forgotten about them, they light you up, then you are aligned to have that dream manifest in your life. And so what I would recommend is taking little steps every day. Because the biggest thing that people do, I, I've been, been working with people for 20 years, like I was saying, and the biggest barrier I see to people's success is a lack of follow through. Mm -hmm. the number one success killer is a lack of follow through. So get a journal, start writing down the steps, break it down to the babiest of babiest of babiest steps that you have to take to make that dream come to life. Because what a loyal friend, what a loyal friend to still be with you after 20 years. Mm -hmm. And to me, I would feel like I owe it justice to do what I need to do to bring it to life. And so follow through, follow through, follow through, follow through, follow through. That is the best advice I can give anybody mm -hmm. from somebody who has had dreams like that and have actually manifested them into physical form. I know that none of it came without my baby steps, baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. There's a reason you haven't heard from me for three years. <laughs> the last three years, I have been birthing my meditative healings library, which we're going to talk about in a minute, mm -hmm. and my dream quest course, which is an online course, uh, three month course. And I had those dreams for 10 years be with me and they never left me. And finally I got to a point where I realized I need to honor them. And it was a lot of work. Let me tell you, it took me the whole time to build these, this membership site, the programs, everything. But all I did was one step, one step, one step, one step. And as I was taking steps, people were coming into my life who were, who were destined to be part of that journey and who were supportive. And, you know, I, I didn't do it alone. I had a team that helped me. Um, and I know from experience, follow through is the answer. And I actually made a plaque when I made the decision, okay, starting this year, I'm going to put these dreams into, into motion. I made a plaque for myself. I put it on my desk and all it said was follow through. Mm -hmm. And every time I hit resistance, every time I got exhausted, every time I got to the point where, oh man, I don't want to do this. It's so, you know, it's financially draining. It's emotionally, you know, an upheaval of my real, putting my, my ideas out there, right? Really stepping into my power. I would look at that plaque, follow through, take a breath and continue on. And you know what? They're done. Mm -hmm. They are manifested. And I couldn't be more grateful that I, I took the steps. So follow through. Yeah. That's what I would recommend. Absolutely. Oh, I agree. You have to, you have to take action. Nothing happens without taking action. Absolutely not. You know, it, there's a momentum that builds when you start taking action. 
Yeah. It's like everything you need starts coming to your experience. But the biggest problem is is taking the is taking the steps. Most people have the dream, have the idea, things start coming to the experience, and they go into shutdown. They go into lockdown. They, for whatever reason, they find all kinds of excuses as to why they can't do it yet. Well, why wait on until later? Why wait? We don't know how much time we have on this planet. Mm -hmm. really, there is no time like the present to make things happen. I totally agree. Yep. Thank you. And you know, it's like. I find a lot of people, they don't even start, you know, they stop before they even start because those, those reasons come up, you know, I don't have the money, I don't have the time, I don't have the resources, I don't know what to do, I don't know how to start, you know, they just, and they don't do anything, you know? That's right. And then, they, and then they wonder, where did the past 20 years go, right? Time goes regardless, <laughs> whether we're going with it or not. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Um, Lynn, thank you. Yes, I would show my puppy, but he's sleeping right now. Aww. So I don't want to wake him up. And yes, Angela is, is lovely. A lovely soul. I agree. Totally. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So um, Angela does have a special offer that we would like to share with all of you. So if you're on the live page, you can just click on the special offer button. And if not, it's uh, alara.at forward slash show forward slash Angela. So I'm going to, oh, I always do this wrong. I'm going to screen share in just a second. Give me one second. Um, okay. I'm just going to screen, just, it just makes it easier for people to follow along a little bit, I think. That's the nice thing about Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, Angela, you want to tell us a little bit about it? Absolutely. So I'm sharing with you today uh, my meditative healings library, my own uh, society, my own group, my own following people. Uh, I haven't even launched this to them yet, so you're one of the first ones to see this launching. Um, over the last 10 to 11 years, I have been developing my meditative healings library, and every one of my events that I did live of processes um, similar to today, uh, I have recorded them and been able to capture all the live energy from all those events. And what I did is I took that entire library of um, these healing events, because I do them once a month in my community. And at some point I was doing them at, at two or three times a, a month. So you can imagine the amount of um, uh, processes I had to draw from. And I developed what, we, what I have coined the Meditative Healings Library, which is a theme-based library of certain things that might be of benefit to you and taken those meditative healings individually, sent them to an audio expert, we've cleaned them up and we've um, been able to capture all the live energy as if you had done one of those events with me in person and put them into my theme-based library. So for example, there in, there's six categories in the library. One is love and relationships, one is self-esteem, one is uh, awakening consciousness, one is um, life, purpose, and career, one is uh, prosperity and abundance, and um, I can't remember what the other one is. I think it's around energy. And each of those categories currently right now has three to four, some of them five different med special meditative healings um, that are in that category to support you in really manifesting your dream life. I continue to add to the library ongoing. So every month, two new meditations are added to the library. Now these are not your typical meditations, as you know from working with me. I work with high vibrational energy. I use, I walk you through a guided visualization. You follow me through that process. And while you're doing that, you're receiving the energy. So some of the um, meditative healing themes, for example, we've done one on thriving, we've done one on uh, manifesting your best life, we've done one on forgiveness, we've done one on self-esteem, we've done one on you know, into the stillness, power animals, soulmate love, all these things. So she's showing you here on the, the video. Um, so right now I think there's about 35, maybe 30, something like that of these the best of the best of working with me in this library um, and it's designed because I've, I've created a consciousness membership site it's designed so that you can go in it 24 7 at any time when you're struggling to get the help you need the assistance you need and so I was really driven because of the work that I do you know I can only be available for people so much 
I already have a really busy practice and um, a really busy life. And so this library to me feels like a way that I can support my, my people that I'm working with uh, 24 seven. So if you wake up in the middle of the night, you're struggling, you have something about a relationship going on in your mind, you can go into the library, find a meditation in under love and relationships that may call to you and receive energy right there. Right now, you don't have to wait. You don't have to contact me. You don't have to wait for a session. None of that stuff. You don't have to wait for a webinar with me. You can get 24 seven energetic support right at the time you need it, which is the most important time. The greatest thing about this library that I love is you don't even have to be listening to what's going on. You can have the, the meditative healing playing in the background and you will receive the energy regardless. So I have lots of clients that have listened to one of my meditative healings library and just put them right back to sleep because the energy does that. It's a high vibrational energy. It puts us back into balance and makes it easier to sleep, those kinds of things. Currently, there's a lot of meditative in there that are about 30 minutes long but we are now starting to add quite a few that are about um, 10 to 12 15 minutes so that if you want just a quick energetic up you know uh, rejuvenation for the day you have access to do that in a very short period of time but again even if you're not drawn to one of the shorter meditative healings all you have to do is play one in the background and again you'll receive the energy support that you're looking for and needing so this is what I'm very excited. This is my baby. I've been doing it for 12, 12 years. Um, and uh, they have been recorded all over, the, you know, all over different areas in North America um, and compressed into these meditative healing libraries. And again, the energy is still active and still alive um, and is available to support you in whatever you may be struggling with at any point. And so for me, that makes me feel really good and uh, makes me feel like I'm lined up with what I'm meant to be doing. So. Yeah. Awesome. And how much is how much is the package um, to for the for the package? Uh, I think it was on there. I can't remember. I think it's twenty four dollars a month, or you can pay for a year of subscription, and it's at a decreased rate. I think two forty. Two forty. Yeah. yeah. And that's in Canadian prices. So um, yeah, most of our American uh, obviously our dollar difference is significant. So. <laughs> that is true. Anyways, so um, if you're called to that, you resonate with the energy that I offer. Um, that energy is available in all of these meditative healings, and it's just really tuned into a specific topic that you may be struggling with at any time. Awesome. Thank you. And you also offered a free gift to our community. Can you just talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so that is um, an energetic process where we're just uh, uh, connecting to source. And I wanted to do it so it's funny for me when I work with energy sometimes I can take quite a long time bringing in the energy and uh, I was asked by somebody in my community if I could do one that is about 12 minutes long that's just energy you know bringing in energy getting us connected feeling rejuvenated recharged so it was a bit of a challenge for me because I wanted to bring in more and more and more so I recorded this one and it's uh, tw I think it's 12 minutes long and it literally is just a connection to source, bringing in energy, balancing all the chakras, and just helping to rejuvenate. So that I put up there for you guys to enjoy, regardless, you know, whether or not we have connections again in the future. You can enjoy that and enjoy the energy upgrade uh, at any point in your day. So you can uh, receive some energy. Awesome. Thank you. And so now, you know, um, if, if, uh, if nobody has any more questions, is there something else that you can share with us about thriving that some, something, you know, beyond the taking action every day, but what else can we do to really thrive in our lives? Play. Hmm. That's the biggest thing. We forget to play. As adults, we become more and more serious. We want to overanalyze. We want to overthink. We want to, you know, we want to dissect everything. We become so serious about life. And you know what? Children are the best manifestors on the planet. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they're curious. They remember how it is to play and they don't take life too seriously. So that's a big element. And you know, I've been able to manifest some pretty amazing things in the last couple of years. And I think part of that is, is because I went and got a horse and I play <laughs> every day for every day, two hours out of my day, I take and I go and I play. And I had horses when I was a kid, so it just takes me back to that childlike place. And um, I have found that is invaluable, invaluable. I don't feel like I've lost anything by taking two hours out of my day to go with my horse. 
if anything, I've gained, I've gained, I've gained, I've gained. Mm -hmm. So I would highly recommend playing more and you will feel so good for it. And you will remember your truth, which is life is pretty darn amazing. Mm. Really, really step into it and you really align with it. Oh, awesome. And I think that's what I'm doing with my puppy playing, you know, and that was, that was one element that was kind of missing too in my life, you know, was the playing. Um, Oh, I was just going to say, I just saw Eagle Song Woman. Where did she go? <laughs> she changed her name to Eagle Song Woman. It's like, oh, I love that, Caroline. Which I lost her for a second there, but she was there on the screen. Oh, there she is, Eagle Song Woman. Wow, I love the, I love the name. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, I just wanted to just give her a shout out because she's been working on her dream. Fantastic. Um, several dreams so seeing her name as eagle song woman it looks like one of her dreams is coming to fruition she's manifesting <laughs> celebrate mm -hmm. yeah celebrate um all right and so anybody have anything else go, go ahead caroline or sorry go ahead eagle song woman <laughs> yes yeah i've been using my name more and more so where, where am i there i am see behind me oh yes yep that's me, Eagle Song Woman. Hold on. I love it. I love it. Yes, yes. yes. Hi, Angela. Hi there. Hi. Um, you may I remember me. As, with, I know. I, it kind of uh, just broke. I don't know if it broke or I, I need to put it on its um, thing. It's kind of just, it's a new camera. I don't know how to use it yet. Just hold it. It's fine. <laughs> I, I, you may remember me as um the lady with the horse merlin oh, i do remember wow you are a very loyal follower that's fantastic <laughs> yeah valera yeah. that's great yeah 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 she's wonderful i yeah as soon as i come into financial abundance she'll be she's the first on my list <laughs> <laughs> so i i actually asked uh, a question based on you caroline oh. eagle song woman mm. And that was about the, you know, if you have a dream that you've had for like 20 years and it's just not coming to fruition. So make sure you watch, go back and watch I will. it. I will. I did ask about that because I was thinking about you. <laughs> Thank you. So I was here in spirit. I was caught in a traffic uh, jam. So that's why I'm here a little late. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I will re-listen to it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Is there anything else you wanted to ask? So don't ask about that, but you can ask something else because that's already kind of there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm on track, Angela. I just more and more every day um, sharing more of who I am and I'm being called on um, from many different sources to, to share my gifts and all that. Um, so I don't know what your package involves, but I'll look at it. Um, I'd love to, to have another horse again. I, I can feel it coming in the future so I don't know if I really have any questions I'm just kind of going with the flow and being me playing being you know um, connecting every day all day um, and being who I am so awesome uh, yeah I'll, I'll re-listen thank you but yeah Good. see you in the world of horses most likely <laughs> Fantastic. nice to yeah. see you again take mm -hmm. care <laughs> awesome thank you eagle song woman that's, that's mm -hmm. not, it's, I'm gonna call you that from now on eagle song woman yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you know, uh, you know, because I always said for myself too that I'm not very good at playing. I'm very serious, right? I don't play. I'm very serious. And so, but I knew I was missing that element, right, of, of being playful and having uh, my life be even like more light, you know? And so now, and I've been asking for a puppy for more than, well, three years, you know, since, because I was there, you know, um, before I moved here, um, I was looking at it and everything, and just my husband always said no. And this weekend, he finally is like, you know, <laughs> just worked out magically. <laughs> the, right, the right puppy. The right puppy and the right timing, right? It really is also about timing. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And I did not forget that I wanted a, a dog. I didn't, you know, it was always there. And, and uh, you know, I say I finally wore my husband down, but... I think it was, it was just, because <laughs> he never says no, right? Never says no to me for anything, except that was the one thing. And, um, but now it's like, it's, it's like so perfect. And he's like, how do we get so lucky, you know, <laughs> like with, with, with this dog? Hey? 
It was worth the wait. It was worth the wait. Absolutely. And so, and that too, you know, it's like, be grateful for even that is like, even if something takes a long time, you know, sometimes it's just that divine timing and, and everything works out so beautifully and easily and, and just flows, you know, it's meant to be. So it's like, hold on to your dreams is what I wanted to end with today. Which is hold on to your dreams. Don't let them go, but take action of some sort, you know? So continue to take action, continue to, you know, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, I'm thinking about flourish, but feed your dream, you know, with something, you know, water it, you know, what, and nourish it, you know, but don't let it go. Because if you have it, you're meant to have it and it's meant to, it's meant to be, right? Absolutely. <sighs> yeah. So thank you so much. I'm like, I'm just, I'm so glad that we did this because I didn't realize it had been so long. You know, it just doesn't feel like it, but uh, I'm so glad that we get a chance to do this. I'm glad that your dreams are coming to fruition that you're manifesting that you're creating that in that you know because I, I i follow you on facebook so i've seen the, the pictures of the horse you know so i was like oh that is so nice so i see you being playful and having fun and enjoying life and i think that's what life is about it's about enjoying right so what can you do today to enjoy life even more regardless of whatever else is going on there's some joy there in life every day and what can you be grateful for every day? Because there's always something, always something to be grateful for. That's why I created the gratitude challenge. And, you know, because <laughs> like sometimes we forget, right? So I'm so grateful for you too, Angela, for everything that you're doing, everything you're creating, everything you're sharing with the world and helping them, helping people to bring their dreams to fruition, to thrive and to, to live, a, live a life that's joyful, right? And abundant. So thank you. Mm, thank you. Yeah, no, I, I enjoy, <laughs> I use that word very well in the sense I am enjoying what I do, which is fantastic. Exactly. And so for everyone who is uh, live or watching later, thank you for being with us. And for the questions, again, thank you so much. And I, I do understand that sometimes during a process, it can feel a little bit difficult when you're releasing, but just let it go. Just let it go and just be in the flow, okay? So thank you so much, everyone. Until next time, may you continue to be blessed with an abundance of joy, peace, love, happiness, prosperity, and radiant health. Sending you all much love and blessings always. Nice. Bye for now. Bye, Bye. 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 Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.